What are you doing, huh? What are you doing, huh? Oh, yeah, you're so happy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, time for a cup of Sanka. This is my garden. Here's another. These are the concrete cast stones that Jeff told me I should have used years ago, but he said this is like. They look okay. They could be a lot more leveler. Okay. The course of commit was put in at the beginning of this year. She'd probably talk louder. Of course, commit was put in a three inch, uh, two to three inch segments this year on the cracks. Um, it's expanded. 30 dahlias in the dahlia bed, uh, which is new this year. Not that this is all new this year, uh, except for the raised bed, uh, which will probably be used for lilies. I haven't quite decided what to use that for, but perennial border along the east side of the path is all new this year. There were a few rows in there, but nothing else. Turned by hand. This is the granite bench I acquired from the alley behind Gray's and moved several times. To, I think this is where it'll stay. I see a note this that came from Brookings when Jeff and I were there for Christmas. A few of the things I dug up. Also, the alder tree um, at the entrance arbor, which I brought from Brookings at Mom's house and just pulled out of the ground. We're about four foot this year. It's going to be a nice tree when it gets older. Rose garden. I'll probably just stay at this amount. I may take some roses out and switch some back in. I was saying you should put, in, put them in, in some sort of a pattern instead of just... It's a block pattern. There's, there's seven deep and five, uh, five wide. Mm -hmm. Seems like they're here and there and everywhere. Nope, they're all in pattern. This is another plant for Brookings, but I can't trying to figure out what it is growing well. It's one of my favorite roses, my Winnie Edmonds. Blooms beautifully, beautiful bright colors and has a nice fruity fragrance. This is the new section of the, I decided to extend the perennial border. Bring it on, on around the back. Get some more stones. I'll continue the pathway. I don't think I'm going to continue it in concrete. It will be continued in, in rock, more Japanese style. It won't be a Japanese style garden, but the walkway will have that effect. The blaze rose is planted on the back. And hopefully, we'll cover the, the garbage can is on the other side of there, so it will eventually cover that entire wall. I haven't really decided what the theme of this garden will be. I think a portion, good portion of it will be in shades of uh, pink and white. And 
there will be pedestals in here with candles and different lighting effects. I just moved this road in. It seems to be doing okay. It's just sitting over here, but this is the new fence will go, be going in back here. There'll be a solid fence with a removable part. Pam will be building a garden back here next year. Sure, sure. What are all these thrown out squashes? I needed the garden space. Or the, those were in the raised bed. I needed to deal with some perennials that will be going into, into the border. My weeping willow, which I don't think is quite in the right place, but when the weeping willow, I need to keep it butchered so it stays small. season. They were well fertilized this year, so they're growing well. First year asparagus bed. Next year I should be able to start harvesting a few spears out of it. This I just built yesterday day before yesterday, broke ground on the new pond. I hadn't anticipated on doing that, but the, got the blue atlas cedar, and after trying to figure out where to put it, I decided here would be nice. It'd be kind of a nice formal garden in this area. Some of the Hinoki cypress and junipers and the Catonia aster. Um, if one's seated at the bench next to the coral bark maple, uh, this makes a nice from the 20s or 30s. I need to seal it up and repaint it blue inside and hook a fountain up into it. And I need to also move that one more time. This is my new rock wall. My brother Paul hauled up a dump truck load of Mount Emily shale for me, and, which I had wanted at, at my request. Built myself a rock wall. Last year I had had uh, dump truck come in and haul in a yard of loam. I know I didn't I didn't want this all one big flat area back there. I needed some character, so I had 12 yards of topsoil mounded right into here. And never could quite figure quite figure out what to do with it. Kind of sat around until I got the shale and this idea just came to me. I hadn't intended on a kidney-shaped bed, but it worked out that I had that amount of rock. Out fairly nicely. This area, I'm still not sure about what's going to happen in here, but it'll be kind of a lounging area. And the first tree we planted when we bought the house, the day we bought the house. They signed the papers. I've topped it this year. I topped it in the spring so it'll branch out more and put out more of a canopy instead of going straight up. Oh, you finally cleaned out this bed over here. I didn't notice. This I wanted to be my orange garden. Orange is such a ghost color to have in the perennial border. Well, what about the fruit trees? But, well, I think the fruit trees would be okay once they get once they get up to a decent height. Perennials would be okay underneath it. Or flowers, whatever decided to come in. I'm still not sure about what's going to go in here yet. I've quite made up my mind. It's kind of an open area. Excuse me, this is 
all been killed a couple weeks ago and I need to get, bring in a rototiller, a rear fine rototiller, and get it all chewed up and replaced with nice lawn and bring in round river rock, nice flat river rock, and round it and put a pathway in all the way along here that leads into the, into the small formal courtyard. And the greenhouse, it's not supposed to leak this year. The greenhouse will not leak this year. It's supposed and to. Next year, I'm going to put uh, the scarlet runner beans that are on the outside. Uh, I was thrilled with that. I've never been able to grow them very well before, and this year they just took off. Uh, good fertilizing and good water, I think, did a lot for that. So uh, next year, I'll be putting those clear along the entire length of the greenhouse just for shade. That roof sure needs washed. Yeah, the roof does need washed. You need it? Okay. Well, make your... The arbor and the... Well, the entry arbor and the grape arbor were put up this last... Well, this summer. And a little more finishing work because there are four grapes on them. Hello? Welcome to my garden. Jeff and I bought this place. Can you hear me? Jeff and I bought this place in 1986, and at the beginning of last year, there's area out here was all flat, had nothing in it, and this starting this spring started to work on it. The structures are new this year: the grape arbor behind, and the new entry arbor, and the concrete pathway are all new. Um, this year. The alder came from Brookings this year. It, well, actually, it came from Brookings at Christmas time. Jeff and I went to mom's house for Christmas, and when I brought it, it was only about five feet tall. It's about nine or ten now, so it's growing real well. People keep asking me why I wanted a birch or an alder tree in the yard because there's such a weed, but it kind of reminds me of home, I guess. The dahlias are new this year, um, 30 of them. I bought them from a lady just down the street. Uh, this is one of the first things that went into the garden is the raised bed. I still haven't ever done anything with it. Max over here was cutting down his telephone pole, so he didn't want to waste them, so he built a little structure. Don't fall. This whole area, the east perennial border, uh, was all blank this, in the springtime. And there were a few roses in, but other than that, there really wasn't anything. Starting in about late February, I turned it all by hand and got the perennials in. Don't amount to much this year, but perennial gardens generally don't amount to much in the first year. So it'll wait for next year for it to really fill out the year after next year. But walking toward the sun's not out bright enough anyway. Welcome to my garden. This is the concrete pathway that I put in at the beginning of the year. I had originally had not wanted to do this, and Jeff told me to use pieces of broken concrete, and I thought it sounded horrible. The Corsican mint and everything has gotten planted in it. Turned out very nice. This is the dahlia bed that went in this year. 30 dahlias that I bought from Vi down the street. My dog. Um, this is my alder tree that I brought from Brookings at Christmas time when Jeff and I went down there for Christmas. People ask me why I want an alder tree in the yard, but 
think it reminds me of home, I guess. I like it. The dreaded cat in the garden. Um, that area is the raised bed that was the, probably one of the first features to go in my garden this year. Actually, the first features to go in my garden a couple of years ago, Max, the neighbor, was cutting down a couple telephone poles and was going to have them hauled off, and I thought, see if I could put it into some kind of use, and that's what happened. And the dirt in it is the dirt excavated from the lawn when it was renovated um, fall before last. Not sure what I'm going to put in there yet. Probably lilies or something. I really haven't made up my mind on that one. This is the East Perennial Border, uh, as it is. And this went in in the spring this year. It uh, was originally all lawn. There were a few roses in it, but mostly all lawn. Turned it all by hand in February, and uh, late February. And got the plants started in March, and it's coming along real nice. I'm real pleased with it. Uh, next year and the year after are going to be the, the its best years. It's first year perennial border, never really, I don't think, that great. It doesn't look that great, but the second, third years really comes into, into its glory. This I wasn't real pleased with in, this, in the beginning. It's a purple cone flower, except it's a white variety called white swan. And now it's doing real nicely, and I think it's going to get too big and cover the pot pathway, so it's going to have to be moved. It's a real nice, real nice plant. The fever few uh, has been cut down already, uh, cut back, but I just love the stuff. It blends in so nicely into the rest of the garden, fills pulls colors together, and real nice in arrangements. It acts kind of like baby's breath. The petunias are, have been cut back severely too, um, but these are azure pearls. Uh, beautiful, beautiful color. I got lots of compliments on them this year. Very nice. I think I'll probably use them again in, along the border here next year. Nice pale, pale blue. This is my Sango Kaku uh, Japanese maple. Um, kind of like to spend a good size or whatever it needs for one nice specimen tree per year for the garden, and this was last year's uh, coral bark maple. Broke one limb off the thing when I was planting it, so it now only has two major limbs coming up. I would like to have had the three, but it's still a nice specimen. I really like it. And the stone bench, which I got out of the alley behind Safeway in Eugene uh, with Gray's forklift. Uh, brought it home, thought it was a gravestone marker. Thank heaven it wasn't. It probably was, was its original intention, but there are no markings on it. And have moved that several times around the garden. Uh, not an easy task. That's the new fountain I got from a house over on... Oh... O Street or something like that over here in Springfield. I uh, figure it comes from probably the 1920s or 1930s, and it's going to be moved one more time over to that area. Uh, hopefully for the last time. I've had to move it twice now, or twice already. It's a little heavy to be doing that with too many times. Uh, hook up, I'm going to hook up a fountain for the inside of it, and real nice fine spray to come up through the middle. It's a beauty. I really, really like it. Probably become kind of a focal point for the garden. And the Catoniaster henrianus that I put next to it, I'm thinking that's where the pond would stay, the pool would stay, but I think I'll leave the Catoniaster there. It does real nicely. And also put in a, well, there's a juniper there that I brought back from Brookings uh, last year. And I'll leave it and Hinoki cypress and another Hinoki cypress. Kind of a border between the rose garden and the rest of the garden. And I'll probably put a lawn area right in through there just for nice, peaceful you know, Japanese feel to the garden. Um, these are the ponderosa pine trees that Debs had given me well, a few years ago, and they're finally starting to take off. I'm not sure if I want them there too much, but I think I'll just keep them tortured and keep them fairly small. I don't want that large tree in the yard. That's the Ceanothus that came from Brookings the same time the alder did, and it's been moved uh, once in the garden already, 
thought I'd lost it, but it came back real nicely. Nice just to see it bloom in the springtime. You can see the Corsican mint. I planted in those in about one and a half inch sections this year in the in the pathway, and it filled in really fast. The big problem with it is the weeds come up through it and the morning glory, which I fight perpetually anyway. Not a easy thing to keep up with. End of the pathway here, I need to put in a few more pieces there and that will end the east border. And I am going to be continuing the border in another section right on around the back side of the property here on the west or the south side of the property. I've brought some rocks already for the new the new pathway. I need to do some more filling in and get them set in, leveled out and things, but they're gonna come right around the side. I'm not sure exactly the theme of this this border yet. Still working on that. I've been wanting some kind of candle garden or a garden where I can put in lighting and play with some different lighting effects. Maybe one more bench go in back here just to see the garden from this vantage point. Um, this is where the dumpsters dumpster is for the apartments. And I've got a climbing blaze started here that will eventually go up across here and hopefully blend that into the rest of the property. My maple that's not doing too well this year got way too hot out here for it in the middle of everything. But the flowering plum is doing very well and I'm anxious for that to bloom in the springtime. I'm going to be planting a lot of pink tulips, uh, probably apricot beauty and Douglas Bader and a few others underneath it. Should be quite a picture in the spring. Odd flower. This is my cleome or spider, spider plant. This area next year, I believe we're going to open up a little bit. It belongs to the neighbor, but we're going to cut the grass down and rototill it and let Pam have a vegetable garden in there. This is where the other bench will be. This is the vantage point that it will have, the vantage that we'll have. And this is the rose garden with, at the moment, 35 roses uh, established in it. There are roses scattered throughout the property, but this is, will be a formal rose garden. Volunteer squash plant right in the middle of everything. It's some very nice roses this year. I never did get anything entered into any of the shows or the fair or anything which I do regret, but don't really have an excuse for it. This is my Cherish, which I had thought about taking out, and I think it's powdery mildew and black spots so badly that it defoliates itself, but it's such a pretty flower that I hate to take it out. These were the raised beds. There's a, that's a purple potato that I got from Pat Patterson. This had started out being the strawberry bed, but they didn't do so well. Uh, this is the two of the vegetable beds. Um, this one's now being used to heal in the perennials to go into the new border. As I find them, I don't want to put them in yet, so I'm just waiting till they get a home. These are some of the oldest roses in my garden. Uh, this one is brandy. I wish there were some blooms on it at the moment. It's a spectacular rose. As you can see by the size of the stalk on the bottom of it. It's been here for a while. I fertilized them very well this year. I had beautiful, beautiful roses in the beginning, in the springtime. This is my new blue atlas cedar that I just put in the other day, and I needed to, I wanted a mound. I wanted some character out here, so I didn't have any extra dirt around, so I broke grow ground on the pond for the in the backyard, the 9 foot by 16 foot uh, lily pond going in, and the dirt excavated from that is what made the mound here. 
And the little corner created here is where the new the pool will go. The stone pool. That's the birch tree Jeff and I bought on the day we signed the place on the property in 1986. Top it this year. Didn't want it to be going straight up. I wanted a little more spread to it, like the Carl and Hilda's across the street. This should make a nice formal little garden in here. This will all be nice fresh green grass in this area right across. A nice little vista all the way across it. And that's a matador, or I'm sorry, not a matador, it's a mikado. One of my favorite roses in the garden. The blooms just keep coming on so strong year after year. And from the beginning of the season right up to the end, it's my strongest bloomer in the garden. I do like that bench. It'll be able to be used, I'm gonna leave it right there so and not plant anything on either side of it so it can be used from either people walking down the perennial border or from this side walking through the, through the little formal garden. Medallia bed. People gasp at that. I like medallias. My bird feeders and a honeysuckle that I got for it. And when that's in bloom, it makes the whole garden smell so nice. I've got a, a black eyed Susan vine climbing up through it. It's a nice combination. Liz Lair kind of <laughs> let me know that. I found out from her that it's popular in England, anyway, to combine vines, plant two vines on the same, at the same place, and those do blend well together. I really like the combination. Some bamboo twigs for it to climb up. That's my yucca plant that got moved over there. I didn't want, I wanted this area here to be a destination. I didn't want it to just be so accessible. I want people to have to walk through the garden to get to it. That kind of blocks it off. And I like the, the effect there, very bold. Not sure quite what I'm gonna do with this area yet. Uh, thinking about maybe some ground covers like uh, creeping thyme and things like that and some more stones of some kind as a, as a paving in here. This is the rock wall that I just got finished with a few weeks ago and the raised bed. This raised bed used to be a mound of dirt. I, last year I had since this whole area was flat, I wanted some character back here, so I had Dave's Loman Topsoil bring me out 12 yards of topsoil, and it was mounded all the way through here, where this is bare now, it was just one big hump out here. And when I got started with the rocks, I wasn't sure what in the world to, what shape the bed would take or anything, but this kind of just happened, and built on the other side of the, the rock wall started on that side. And as I came around the corner, I thought, well, combine the, bring the bed in a little farther, make a kidney shape out of it. And so it took some doing to dig this dirt into that bed. But I am pleased, very pleased with the, with the final result. This is my butterfly bush that I got not too long ago. My heather, which is a beautiful color. I originally had three, but I have lost two of them, and I don't know why. Another Ceanothus. They're such a beautiful color. That's my Clarodendron or Glory Bower. Uh, it's not enjoying the sun out here too much. It's been 80 and 90 degrees the past few days. My Southern Magnolia tree. I'm going to put a lot of ground covers out here, I think. Probably some bulbs for springtime, but i leave it mostly to ground covers. I just transplanted the Colchicum, Fall Crocus out here from the, it was next up, next to the house in the iris and completely lost, so. Brought that out here. This is gonna be, I've got a wire fence across here now just to keep the dogs out of the garden when I want to keep them out. Um, have decided though to replace it with a wooden fence um, and just enclose the entire garden out here, make it a, a nice place.
my dogs. I let them in when they, when all the plants are well established so that they can't trample everything, but I do keep them out when the garden is coming up and new things are planted. This is all going to be, I've got to get a rototiller in here, a nice rototiller, and get it all tilled up. Uh, this is going to be my blue river of hyacinths, uh, grape hyacinths in the spring. I just purchased 2,000 of them. I'm just going to throw them out and rototill them in and let them come up in the springtime. This is all a mess. We just got the firewood in for the winter time. And that's the beginnings of the lily pond. This is the grape arbor that went in. I got four grapes planted on it right now. And by next year they should be doing well enough to provide enough shade. The, re the original reason for building this grape arbor, besides the fact that I wanted one, was to provide shade in the summertime for the greenhouse, which gets overheated. So there were scarlet runner beans and now the grape harbor. And that basically is the garden at this time of the year. Uh, this is late, or yeah, late September. Kind of declining. I wish I had more bloom out here. Maybe next year.